So once again, uh, thank you very much for accepting the invitation and hosting us in this beautiful uh, space uh, where you're displaying with a couple uh, more interesting artists. Um, the name of the space is? Uh, so this is Thameside Studios. Thameside sort of, Studios. Um, and it's a sort of a, a big artist complex, uh, but there's also many creative different people here, sort of from jewelers through to uh, sort of photographers, artists, and then some other businesses. Okay. Uh, and you're having a um, couple of a uh, couple of paintings here. How many paintings are you display? Um, so, so six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Quite a random yeah. uh, question, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's a little bit chilly, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I did bring sort of. Um, 20 odd paintings with me, mm. but we it's sort of we're quite a sort of a, sort of they're large works, but it's also sort of yeah, everything's given space, and mm. so it's not overhung. Sort yeah. of, uh, yeah, it's a really big space, so it is, it, yeah. and it's really mm. well managed, curated, it's beautifully curated. Like, there's some few sculptures here, I will also yeah. display them here, and uh, your paintings, which are marvelous. I haven't seen the biggest one since no. we met because it's kind of, you could say mm. it's like a second round. Of our this yeah. is the second time we meet, and yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, I think so. We, we met at sort of uh, Horizon Landscape and Beyond at yeah, the Cello Factory, Cello Factory. and so you know, that was me taking out my comfort zone trying mm -hmm. to do these landscape paintings. Sort of uh, when here, sort of, I know it's a full range of my painting practice. Sort yeah. of, uh, Maybe I'll ask you a few questions. Um, the ones I ask uh, usually, how were you, were you introduced to art? Um, oh, my mum's an artist, and okay. so sort of. Uh, um, I guess yeah. Sort of. I know when I was at art school, sort of my teacher at the time, she, her only way of sort of envisioning art was to sort of have your pencil and measuring, sort mm. of like drawing figuratively. Yeah. And so sort of my mum's an abstract painter, and so from a young age, I just accepted sort of I can do all this abstract art, and mm. so sort I of ended up sort of teaching my teacher more than she taught me. Mm. So sort of. that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's mm. it's quite rare that. Um, I mean, artists in general are rare, so it's really nice to have a yeah. parent that's <laughs> introducing yeah. you to, to yeah. that from very early age. Yeah. And, and you can see there's a little bit of uh, also this um, measuring type of uh, approach, which is your paintings are really meticulous and yes. um, mm. well thought, but at the same time really fluid. So yeah. it's kind of like an interesting mix of mm. approaches. Yeah, but there's, there's always sort of contrast within my works against yeah. something sort of very sort of fluid and natural set against sort of hard edge, straight lines. So yeah. sort of nature versus technology, vice mm. versa. Mm. So. I actually wanted to ask why are you interested in this um, in this contrast between nature and technology? What brings uh, I guess I grew up in the countryside, so I've sort of you know, nature's always been very close to my heart. But then moving to London, mm. sort of I remember visiting New York and seeing all the skyscrapers. That was really inspiring. Mm. Uh, I guess also just naturally, sort of human beings, sort of, mm. we're drawn to make these sort of structured sort of uh, objects or sort of decisions. Uh, but then also sort of the spontan spontaneity of life is out there, and the universe too, mm. sort of uh, stargazing. <laughs> that is true. That is true. There is a little bit, uh, a little bit. There's a lot of this transcendental uh, yep. way of portraying the kind of like pondering on, on mm. life and the universe as well mm. in your yeah. in your paintings. Yeah. It's almost like stargazing when you look at them. Definitely, yeah. So it's nice. Yeah, it could be some gaseous galaxies or yeah. in the far distance, or it could even be something microscopic. So yeah. uh, yeah, it's an That's interesting amazing. day. Um, so yeah, just uh, just kind of answer where the geometric, the fluid, geometrically fluid style came from. So you're saying it was kind of from uh, it was this transition from living in the countryside to uh, then exploring the geez. world? Yeah, I guess yeah, too, maybe sort of. Uh, then, well, I guess with all of my work, so there's just been a, a natural progression, mm. and sort of like so. I've always seen myself as an abstract painter, mm. and then I don't know, it's just sort of over the years I've sort of added this hard edge element to it. I guess sort of I started off in the countryside with all the fluidity, and mm. as I've got older, I've added more hard edge. Oh, of, did you? But yeah, it was like so, a progression. Yeah, of I guess this. A Progression, sort of, yeah. Adding of the. But then also the recent developments is having the fluidity within the structure, mm. and so then it's the push and pull, yeah. sort of like. Uh, 
really well managed. I have, I think I've seen some of your um, pieces extending over the yes, edge of yeah. the, the well, painting. Well, so we have so well, some of them there have sort of like this piece here, mm -hmm. sort of the expanse, and so sort of like the painting wanted to leave the canvas. Yeah. So uh, I did it, and so uh, so uh, so the structure, yeah, sort of then left the canvas and mm -hmm. took over the whole wall. And, and are uh, these uh, the the structures that you're adding on top of that paintings? Are they uh, can you like detach them and then attach them in different yeah, places? So, yeah, so yeah, so each object had to be individually installed. Okay. Uh, and so that was yeah, quite a feat. Mm. Um, but I was up to the challenge. Mm. Sort of, um, but yeah, no, I, instead of trying to sort of hang them on screws, I just velcroed them to the wall. Mm, so okay. that made it possible. Mm. And why you decided to go with the paintings themselves, just the paintings this time? Oh, uh, well, I guess well, that's, that's the true sort of um, part mm. of my practice. That was just one. Mm. So I, I started those expansive paintings came mm -hmm. from a show that I curated called uh, Amalgamation mm -hmm. and so the idea was that the painting is sort of amalgamating with the space mm -hmm. and yeah. so sort of uh, as I've said before so yeah when I come up with an idea for a show so I then tweak my own practice to fit in sort yeah. of and have, yeah, yeah, pushes me in different directions oh, that's nice the, was there anything about this show that you consider as this push, you could say? Uh, this is more sort of like a, um, a sort of just like reflecting on sort of how my practices evolved over the years. Sort of, uh, uh, but no, yeah, sort of this is be a purely painting. Sort of um, when in the past I've gone into more sort of sculptures with the resin pieces. Um, but it's nice to return to the canvas with this exhibition. Yeah, and also I, I think the. I'm not sure if it was uh, intentional push, but it really worked out well in terms of the, um, the amalgamation of different artists here. It creates this really... Um, There's a lot of variety, yeah, but then it also sort of ties in. So, so yeah, so Patrick, uh, Alan and I, sort of, yeah. uh, we actually all work at the National Gallery together, sort mm. of like hanging sort of uh, with the Van Goghs and Rembrandts mm. and stuff. So we've, we've had some experience in sort of putting up uh, exhibitions before. Yeah, that's, and, you can see that yeah. because it's so well organized and beautiful. Yeah. And so, there's, so, it's spotless here. Yeah, so Patrick was the one that put in the proposal for the exhibition mm. and so we had, it was a two, three year wait. Mm. And uh, so he's the brainchild of it all. And mm. so he, you know, he, he's very meticulous too. And mm. so he planned it all out in his head and sketches at home and sort of... Uh, is and it, or was it, was these it, are sort of the sculptural pieces sculptural. and the, the one here, sort of... Um, and so, uh, see, it only took us a day to actually hang everything, sort of... Uh, a day? It, yeah, just one day. No, oh, that's and quick. Also, so when we, we positioned all the large paintings mm. first, um, but all the past sculptures were still wrapped up in polythene then, so you couldn't mm. really see. They're all in bits, and mm. you couldn't sort of see how they'd come together. So he was the one that secretly knew, sort of, for the, the relationship Mm. between them uh, when Alan and I sort of just had to wait for the surprise. Do you think there was a certain amount of like a universal accident that you three create pieces that are like super varied but at the same time complement each other? Yeah, no, it's all you, you never know until it's yeah. on the wall. But yeah, yeah. It's like you were saying when I sorry when I enter here, you said mm. that the hard edges, each individual yes. artist, yeah. they have a little bit of that. They, we, well, we knew there was a relationship, so that's why we put mm. the proposal in together. But mm. yeah, so sort of, uh, we didn't know it was going to work out quite so well. So sort of, uh, and yeah, no, everyone's come to the show. It's been really complimentary, so that's nice. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's a variety. So sort of, yeah. so it's um, very vibrant too. Yeah, uh, but it's a big space as well. So mm. yeah, so sort of, uh, but no, luckily all of us produce quite large works mm. and uh, so yeah nice Amazing. couldn't be happier <laughs> yeah um, um, I had a question follow up to this question uh, do you have any um, artistic role models like people that you were kind of inspired uh, you already okay, said your so, mum yeah my mum I guess yeah sort of um, when, I, when I was really young Picasso sort mm. of um, and I don't know, since then, sort of like um, Franz Ackerman and sort of his sort of mind maps, or sort of mm. very large abstract paintings mm. and stuff. Um, Gabriel Rothko, he did these geometric sort of um, paintings that are about sort of like a Japanese board game that sort of, uh, and that he would use sort of like gold leaf within these pieces and sort of, and I, occasionally I use some uh, sort of chrome colors or iridescent colors in my pieces here. So sort of these triangles in the middle have bronze mixed into them, sort of. Uh, How did you mix them bronze? Oh, uh, it's just we're buying sort of golden paints, oh. uh, but then what I've done is I've mixed them with sort of matte colors, which then okay. create these striking.
different colours that you don't come across every day? No, not at all. I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone with this piece. Yeah. Of, uh, they, take, they take months to produce. I can imagine. Um, so, no, yeah, the, the variety of colours, sort of, uh, sort of, some of them do are quite opposing, but it sits well together. Yeah, probably takes, as you said, months and a lot of effort to mask everything so that the there's a lot of um, there's a lot of layers to it. Yeah, well, it's, it's all sort of, it's, the, the, I build up the background first and it's all weaving and sort of, and then I reach a point and I think that's done. <laughs> and then I've got to scratch my head and sort of wonder sort of which structure would work best with it, sort of wherever it be, sort of this triangle effect uh, or the expansive checkers. Uh, and yeah, no, I've done sort of previously sort of lines and sort of other sort of, sort of hard edge structures. How uh, quickly uh, that uh, final uh, touch, uh, like the idea for it, come to your mind when you finish? Uh, well, it depends it. like how much I like the painting. Okay. Sort of, like if if I really uh, sort of have a soft spot for the background mm. and sort of I might not touch it for months and I just mm. look at it and yeah. sort of uh, so I don't, don't want to mess it up. Yeah, so, I can uh, imagine that. Uh, um, yeah, other times. So you sort of just get the ball rolling and put mm. down the first section of structure and then you work from there and it's sort of yes, a natural development within the piece. Do you do, you do some sort of sketches that kind of visualize? Occasionally, yes, or, or I'll maybe photograph the piece mm. and then print off the photograph and then work on top. Mm. That's sort of, um, yeah, there's, uh, but yeah, usually I sort of yeah, try and picture it in my head and yeah. then hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a question regarding people are starting their journey. If you have any tips for like people going into art, yeah. like oh, you make say, yourself from the past or... Yeah, you know. oh, it's, it's very wise to uh, go to lots of openings and yeah. network. Yeah. Um, but yeah, also just to keep going, sort of mm. like, um, I don't know, it's, uh, you've got to put your heart and soul into it. Mm. Um, but it's also yeah, something that you get a lot out of. Mm. And so yeah, and I see, yeah, work hard and uh, go to lots of parties. Yeah. In terms of uh, parties are good, <laughs> yeah. um, vernissage and everything. Yeah. Um, in terms of pushing, do you think is uh, there's this aspect of kind of like struggling as an artist? Do you think is important to a certain degree for for art? Uh, I don't know if important is the right word, but yeah. so it's definitely part of it. Yeah, it's definitely. <laughs> so you need to be ready for it. Yes, yeah, so I think so. It. Yeah, so yeah, so it's, it's very rare that sort of uh, things yeah. click right away. Yeah. So but yeah, also no, it's, it's, it's amazing how so it's a it's a very small world though, and everyone knows mm. everyone. Yeah. So sort of, um, especially amazing. here with like all these different studios on site. So sort yeah. of some people. That have visited this exhibition, have uh, had a studio here for like 14 years. Oh, and uh, so yeah. most artists do just lock themselves away in the studio, but occasionally they must mm. bump into each other yeah. at openings here or yeah. sort of at the local cafe. Yeah, L like you said, going out and like to the parties and everything, that's, now that I'm thinking about it, it's yeah. extremely important considering that a lot of artists are rather on the more kind of like, uh, like uh, introvert. Or yeah, something. when they're like, yeah. most are, more artists are introverts rather than extroverted, yeah, so yeah. it's kind of like really important to push yourself. Yep, and it's also important to go to lots of shows and get inspired and see what other Spanish, people are doing, yeah. sort of like, you get so much out of uh, talking to other artists and yeah. seeing other sort of things yeah. and so sort of If you think about it, throughout the years, it was always about the collaborations mm. and the collectives yeah. in, in yeah, the art exactly. world. Completely, yeah, exactly, yes, they have these movements. Yeah. So sort of, uh, yeah. it's know. not going away. Well, no, yes, we are. They said a few years ago that sort of like Sarchi is sort of the death of painting, and uh, we're all yeah. still painting away. So. That's true. That's yeah. true. Okay, so maybe we can uh, um, wrap it by me asking you, what is art? What's art? Uh, so sort of um, a, a presentation of mm. sort of uh, one's uh, thoughts and. Um, uh, endless possibilities. Mm, so. Endless possibilities. Going beyond the Going canvas. beyond, yes. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, talking to me. Thank you, Matthew. It's great to see you.